Sam here from Sheridan Computers. I'm going to walk through how to help mitigate against email impersonation attacks using Microsoft 365. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, I'm pretty sure we've all seen those emails um, that pretend to be from your boss or from a key member of staff or somebody who's authorization saying, hey, can you make this payment to such and such person, please? Here's the bank details. Can you do it as soon as you can? Um, now, what I mean by that is not an email that appears to be from your own domain. So not from Sam at example.com, for example. Um, there's other protection methods for that, such as DKIM and SPF. What I mean is if somebody sets a Gmail account up, for example, uh, set a Gmail account up with the name of Sam Sheridan. If you know a person in my accounts department that does the payments, then you could send an email to them from that Gmail account or Hotmail account, whichever it may be, you can set the name to whatever you want uh, and say, can you make this payment as soon as please? If they didn't notice that it was a Gmail account or a Hotmail account, um, what the fall for it? And because it's um, not appearing to come from your domain, then it will pass SPF and DKIM records. Of course it will, because if it's a Google account and it appears to be coming from Google, it's going to be allowed. So how do you help um, prevent that? Well, it's quite easy if you're using Microsoft 365. Uh, you can just go into the Exchange uh, control panel, and add a couple of rules. There's no extra cost involved on it. It takes about five minutes out of your life to do this. And that's what this video is going to walk through and show you how to do. Uh, if you do like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And let's walk through and do that. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. In order to set our rule up, uh, we need to go into the Exchange Admin Center. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so to set the rules up, we need to go into Mail Flow and then Rules. And we can see any existing rules that we've got here. You can see that I've been playing with this before. Um, so what we can do is add a new rule, create new rule. So call this what you will. So anti impersonation, whatever you're going to call it. So setting the rule up. We want to apply this rule if the sender is external to the domain. So we don't want this to apply to uh, anybody sending internally, obviously. So we're going to do that and do is external or internal. We want to specify outside the organization. Um, so we need to add another conditional here. And that is going to be, uh, I want to do if the message headers includes any of these words. And any of these words are going to be the members of your key staff, uh, members of staff that you want to enable protection for. So enter text here. Now this is the message header field that you're looking for. So message header name we want from. And enter words. So if the from message header includes any of these words. So I put in Sam Sheridan. If anything, uh, any emails originate from externally with my name on them. If you have other key members of staff, you can put them in. And you can just keep going for to list all the staff that you need to do this for. Um, so we've got the conditions set up. What do we want it to do? Well, I'm just going to have it block the message. And there's various uh, rejection policies. We're just going to have it delete the message and not notify anybody. Um, so if you've got multiple domains, uh, say, for example, you've got joeblogs at example.com um, and you've also got joeblogs at example.org and you do send emails between the two domains, you're going to want to whitelist the other domains. Uh, in order to do this, we can create an exception rule. So except if the sender domain is and in here we can put example.org. Um, we've got multiple domains, example.net. Add them in. Uh, so we've got real name, apply this rule. If the sender is external, so not inside the organization, uh, and the message header includes any of these words, 
the message head that we're searching is from. And the words are obviously the names of the staff. But to block the message, don't bother notifying anybody, uh, except if the sender's domains are those that we specified. So we can enforce a rule or we can set it to testing. I generally recommend that you test these things before you go ahead and apply them to your organization. You can increase the severity for auditing purposes, so we can set it to high for impersonation. Uh, you can specify a date that you want this rule to become active on and a date that you want it to deactivate on, if applicable. Um, you can stop processing more rules after this because it's blocking the messages anyway. Let's go ahead and click next. And then you can review your rule. So again, we've got the rule name, the rule conditions, and it's pretty much presented in English. And the rule conditions are apply this rule if the sender is located, not in the organization. Uh, the from message header includes the names of the people that you want. Do the following, delete the message without notifying anyone, except if the sender's domain is the domains that you specified. Um, and we can see the other settings that we chose here. We can do finish on that. So transport rule created successfully. Go ahead and click done. Now you will see this appear in the um, list of rules that you've got. If you need to uh, adjust the location that it's in, because obviously the rules are going in order. If you want it to come first, for example, so you don't need it to process the rest of the rules. What we want to do is we can go ahead and move up. And you'll see it's moved our anti-impersonation rule up. So move it up to the top. So our rules at the top of the um, list. We've got stop processing other rules, so it's going to get blocked. So we don't need to mess about with um, applying other rules to the messages. So you'll notice it is disabled. So the last thing we need to do is to go ahead and disable that. Um, so if you just click on the disabled, I want to enable it. So we've enabled our rule, we can go ahead and close that. So we give it a few minutes and it's now showing enabled. And we're done with that, so let me switch back. The reason behind this video, uh, I've been out to see a few potential new clients recently. We ask them what type of IT issues that they're having. And this comes up quite a lot, to be honest. Um, it's come up a few times recently where uh, they're receiving emails, impersonating staff saying, can you pay this invoice? They're running Microsoft 365 and it's really not hard to mitigate against. You just log into the Exchange control panel and set up the rules exactly as we just did. So. If uh, I can see so many people having these issues, I'm guessing somebody else will find it useful too. If you do find this video useful, please uh, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, if you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as I release them.